Last week, Federal Environment and Climate Change Minister St Stephen Gilbeau announced that the federal government is proceeding with consultations around its emission reduction plan. Well, that puts the Alberta oil sands squarely in the federal government's crosshairs because the oil sands accounts for 11% all by itself of national emissions. And there are other things to do with bitumen than turn it into uh, gasoline and diesel. So I'm gonna to talk to Laura Kilcrease, who's the CEO of Alberta Innovates, about the superior economics of one option. So welcome to the interview, Laura. Nice to be here, Markham. Now this interview is about uh, Alberta Innovates Bitumen Beyond Combustion Program, which started in 2016, 2017. And you're only a couple of years away from having a commercially ready process to turn bitumen into carbon fiber, which can be used in cars and tur wind turbine blades and all sorts of other things. You recently released a white paper that sets out the economics of bitumen beyond combustion. They're really, really impressive, aren't they? Yeah, they're phenomenal. Um, and, and we should say that we see bitumen not just as a product to refine and burn. We see bitumen as a raw material from which we can take new materials that the world is demanding. So one of those big materials is carbon fiber, but not just carbon fiber alone. Out of each barrel of bitumen, we can also take asphaltines. We can take actuated carbon that could be used for new big storage batteries for, for renewables. And we could take the precious metals that are so very much needed in some of those batteries like vanadium that can be used in terms of, uh, as an alternative to lithium. So while carbon fiber is the biggie, if I can put it that way, there's several other products that can come out of bitumen today. And in fact, because it is bitumen and it is it has the traits it has um, over some other oil and gas that could be my, um, produced elsewhere in the world, it actually is better for these materials than, than we might think. Well, let's talk about the economics because if you make carbon fiber uh, out of it, for instance, that adds an extra $179 of value to a barrel of bitumen. Because not only are you taking the heavy end of the barrels of snow, one, so roughly 50 to 60% of that barrel, and turning it into a, a product with a lot more value, but now you free up the light end of the barrel, which is like kind of like light, sweet, crude, and it now has a higher value. So the total of all of that is $213 uh, per barrel, as opposed to like compared to $30 if you just sold it to a refinery. I, I'm no math whiz, Laura, but those numbers look pretty good to me. Yeah, they're, they're phenomenal for two perspectives. One, the one that you've just actually displayed, which is the amount of value that we can get out the barrel of bitumen versus the alternative that we've done today um, it is certainly a multiple. Uh, even if one didn't believe those numbers and you'd say it's a little bit high, take it down by 50%. It really doesn't make any difference. You're still in the money, so to speak. Uh, but we do believe those numbers are correct. Second is we have to look at a macro level. And at a macro level, you just have to look at the carbon fiber market alone in North America that needs a consistent supply of raw material, and that raw material can be our bitumen, we believe by 2030 that market is at least $230 million um, dollars in the, U, uh, the US market alone, um, excuse me, billion. Um, and if we just get a small portion of it, we can actually turn the oil sands that are one of the largest producers of GDP in this country into an even larger and substantial producer of GDP. So instead of this argument about oil and gas being bad and the emissions being bad, and therefore we got to stop producing, uh, you know, digging up our bitumen, leave it in the ground. Oh my God, we can still with no emissions, bring it to the table for the country and actually replace as an alternative, the existing production of GDP from an emission, uh, um, something that happens to emit to something that doesn't emit. And in fact, if you can produce those carbon fibers, uh, you could then use it for even better um, car, uh, carbon emission reduction because it's going to be used in cars and automobiles and 
and planes and things that will be lighter and easier to power. Well, let's talk about uh, an aspect of this that I don't think, I didn't see in the study that you would put a number to, but that is developing new manufacturing industry in Alberta. Now, uh, I was did an article for Alberta Views magazine uh, that came out in March, and I interviewed Alex Walk, who's the VP of Sales and Marketing for Zoltec, one of the big carbon fiber manufacturers, I think it's located in Missouri, and he's worked with you folks at, uh, at Alberta Innovates. And Alex told me very clearly, you put the factories as close to the, uh, to the carbon fiber precursor, which is what you'd be making in Alberta, as close to it as you can. And yes, we, if, if there uh, uh, is a cheap uh, a source of precursor in Alberta, we will build a plant or plants in Alberta. So not only do you have the value out of the barrel, now you have all this additional investment and additional jobs that would be created by building the plants to use it. Yeah, absolutely. So I think you, you highlighted this very well with your example. We're gonna attract businesses that otherwise wouldn't be here or wouldn't be in Canada because of what we have available. But we're also going to take businesses that are already here in Canada that are using bitumen in a traditional way and give them opportunities to use bitumen in a non-traditional way. So to me, that's part of the transformation of the energy market. It's the conversion of what we have into new things, but it's also the traction of foreign direct investment into the country because we have something so unique that others really don't have in the same manner. Well, let's talk about another product, and that's asphalt binder. So uh, even in a low carbon world where everybody, let's say, drove a, uh, an electric, electric or hydrogen vehicle, you still have to repair roads, you still have to build roads. And the, uh, the bitumen actually makes a very, very superior quality of, of uh, asphalt binder. The only issue is, of course, transporting it over distances because it has to be heated. But I understand that Alberta Innovates is working on some ways to do that. Absolutely. What people don't realize is even in this um, reduced emission world that we're living in, um, and let's just say it's 100 million barrels a day uh, that's produced in the world, even when we get to 2030 to 2050, when it may be down to 20 million barrels a day, the world is not going to stop driving, as you said, whether it's hydrogen, whether it's gas, whether it's solar, whether it's whatever form it is. So we still need asphaltines and asphalt for, for the roads. What people haven't thought about is as the production of oil and gas goes down, so goes the production of asphaltine. Yet again, using our barrel of bitumen to produce these materials, that's just another material that will still have the same demand as it has today. And one might even argue an increasing demand, yet a reduced supply from around the world. So actually, We've been very conservative with our estimate on pricing for asphaltines, but we actually think it could go above our estimates that we put in that paper. Right, and that was an additional fifty dollars per barrel over and above the the price that we received from, say, from a. So it's not quite as as profitable as a carbon fiber, uh, but nevertheless, it's still double or or more what you get just selling it as a feedstock to a refinery. Well, Laura, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate your insights and uh, good luck with the BBC program. Thank you. Um, looking forward for you to see it in real life.